Well, if I had known I was going to get to doodling so soon after making that I'm still around video, I know it's been a month and I ain't posted, I would have never posted that video. But you never know when art is going to strike, you know what I mean? You never know when that motivation is going to kick in, you know? And I happened to have some time last night and I wasn't dog tired and uh, I went to doodling. So that's just what happened. It just happens like that. And we can't, um, and it, we, we, we can't predict these things. So about a month or so, well, it was about a month ago, um, a friend of mine was on my TikTok and she saw where I had doodled a little jumping spider chilling on the top of a stapler surrounded by some plants and mushrooms and stuff. And um, she was like, oh my gosh, that is so cute. I have a pet jumping spider. And I was like, broski, I didn't know you had a pet jumping spider. And I was like, send me pics. So she sends me pics of her spider. And I was like, man, I'm going to doodle your spider. I probably should have said that a little different. I'm going to draw your spider. Not Doodle sounds too much like diddle. And I'm not diddling spiders. But in any case, um... <laughs> I just made myself laugh. <laughs> Anywho, so I pull it up last night and I get to draw in, you know, and I wanted this spider to look extra cozy, extra cute, extra chonky, fluffy, adorable, you name it. And I have it looking like it's just relaxing atop a mushroom. And I had a whole lot of fun drawing it, a lot of loose lines, a lot of big um, bubbly areas. The mushroom is extra bubbled, so cute. And I wanted the colors to, to be vibrant, you know, so I knew I wanted a red mushroom. And I started drawing these like really patchy patterns on along the bottom. But I didn't want just like the white. You know how you see like the red mushrooms with the white spots? I didn't want white. Um, and then I thought about like an acid green, but I felt like that would look too Christmassy. So I went with purple instead. And I think the purple and the red look nice together. That's my opinion. You don't have to like it. Um, and then, you know, I added some like um, webbing along the bottom. And I think that was a nice little little touch little detail and I went with that cell shaded style um, I have been trying to work on using different colors for my line art I don't want to just stick to just black I feel like when you use different colors for line art it really can make your piece pop but I'm still working on it I'm not that good at it yet so practice makes perfect and I was attempting to do that with this one I know I did it with my last drawing with the Among Us I tried to use different colored line arts and I felt like it really aided in the piece so um, the more you, the more I do it the better I'm gonna get I just got to keep practicing um, I've been watching lots of other artists do this technique and they're so so good at it and I'm still just figuring my out my way you know um, so yeah I was using different color line arts her spider is brown and an orangey color if I had to guess I would say this is a female royal jumping spider um, the females are usually brown and they have these light green petty palps and the males are black and white with vibrant iridescent -y green petty palps. They're very bright. They glow. They look like big glowing eyes when you shine a light on them. Um, they're very common around here. I can't remember what she said her spider's name was though. I think it's Ginger. I could be wrong. But these colors were like giving me coffee vibes, you know. Um, I love the way the drawing turned out. And I was adding like shading and stuff in there. And I made sure to put shading behind the spider webs too. Just for that extra little detail. Um, I think it helps make the piece pop. And I wanted to go for the sticker look, you know. Like I did that with my wizard duck. 
and I wanted to do it with this one too. I didn't give it that bold white outline or that shadow, but it's just a simple piece. There's no background or nothing, and it could be a sticker if I wanted it to be, you know? Um, overall, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I love the eyes. I gave her eyelashes <laughs> in the reference picture it looks like she has eyelashes and I thought that was so cute so feminine um so I wanted to bring that into my piece as well and yeah you know I, that that's it that's the drawing I think it turned out great um school's been going fine so far uh the lesson planning has been exhausting um, I was able to get my lesson plans for next week done early. I utilized my Thursday, so it was a quiz day for most all my classes. So that gave me the entire day to not only grade the quizzes as I was working on my next week's worksheets and lesson plans, um, but also it gave me an opening this weekend to just relax. And so that's why I was able to draw last night because I wasn't working on lesson plans. Um, next week in digital design, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be having the students practice with the marquee tool, the lasso tool, the polygon lasso tool, and the wand tool. So each day they're going to work on a specific tool. And my worksheet has a series of images on the left side that they have to cut out using that tool and move it over to the right side um, and try to paste them back and paste them back in place and so I have like boxes for that um, the worksheets were fun to come up with part of me feels like e there's only three boxes on there um, so part of me feels like maybe it's not enough to keep them busy for the entire 55 minutes but it'll keep them busy for a little bit. And the goal for me, the goal is for them to learn the tool. My goal is not to keep them busy from bell to bell. And I know that's what ad admin wants us to do. You work these kids from bell to bell. They're not allowed to have free time. But my goal isn't that. There's no way. Like my goal is you get your hands on this tool you learn the motions of how to use this tool, what the tool looks like so you know what to click. And when you're done with this worksheet, if you're still not comfortable using this tool, do it again, do the worksheet again until you are comfortable with this tool. But if, if you're ready and you feel like you're good, then tomorrow we'll work on another tool and you can have some free time and relax. Children deserve to have a break. And that's what I was just talking to a coworker of mine. I said, these kids are in here for nine hours a day, just like we are. And they deserve to have a break in between classes. You expect us to teach them from bell to bell. And their only break is the five minute walk between classrooms. You expect them to constantly be absorbing information all day long without a brain break. Like... That is so insane to me. There's no way. Like when I was in school, there was no bell to bell. It was you did your lesson and then you sat quietly and you read a book or you doodled or you did what you needed to do. But or you could study. You could practice what you just learned. You had the opportunity to do that. I don't see why we can't continue doing that. So I'm doing it in my classroom. I don't care what they say. Um, I teach and then even if my lesson lasts for 20 minutes they they learn for 20 minutes and some children are motivated enough I've noticed to keep learning on their own which I think is fantastic that's good that's good uh, most of them just play video games and watch YouTube but um, sometimes my lessons last for 30 35 minutes again you know it's a 55 minute class you got 20 minutes to chill you know to take a little break from what you just learned I'm they're not stupid these kids aren't stupid they they are absorbing the information you know um, but yeah so I worked on my worksheets um, AV kids are gonna be doing photography stuff next week they're gonna be the AV one kids are gonna do um, shots by size and the AV two kids are gonna do shots um, they're gonna do like a 
abstract, abstract photography. And then the next week, we'll, we'll dip into next week by Thursday, but it's gonna go from AB2 doing shots by perspective, which is angled shots. Um, and then the AB2 kids will do monochromatic photography. Um, and then after that, we got still life, we've got lighting, we've got lots of stuff coming up for them. And then the POAV kids are gonna get into their um, draw, uh, uh, sketch your style books, which are so good. These books are so good. I was just flipping through it. I've got it figured out, like we're just gonna do from this page to this page and hit each chapter in the page. The chapters aren't very long, they're only like a couple of pages long they're gonna do their practice art and then the next day we'll do from that page to that page you know so we might get anywhere from five to ten pages in a day um, and once we get into like drawing the full-on clothing pieces because the whole beginning of the book is practicing different clothing items practicing how to sketch um, then they're gonna start building their own croquis which is just a fancy word for you know model um sketch like 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 the model that you're going to draw the clothes onto you know um and once we get into the portion where they're drawing their own stuff that's when i'm going to implement elements of design um principles of design as it pertains to fashion you know so that's really exciting um i don't know if i want to do this next year <laughs> I was so confident before school started. I was so confident. I was like, on paper, I'm an A plus teacher. All my lesson plans are sound. I know what I'm doing. Everything's like on point. In practice, it is exhausting. There's so much to do all the time. Like, you're, there, there, there's all these little tidbits that that they that they make you do like you gotta you got a lesson plan it's not just lesson plan you have to physically do the worksheets and the quizzes and you have to grade everything in between you have to um make sure you're you're juggling the three i have three different classes there's a teacher down the hall who has six different classes that she has to juggle that's that's wild and then on top of it all, you have your, your T-test, your DMAC, your, um, your slow. I don't even know what the heck slow is. What the heck is slow? I don't know. I've not been trained on it, but apparently I have to do it. <laughs> you have to juggle the ARD meetings with the kids with the IEPs, the kids who have BIPs. You have to go to meetings for that, which means you have to make sure that your sub that watches your class for that period while you're in your meeting can keep your kids entertained while you're gone and you have to hope and pray that those kids are behaving you know um the whole time I was at my first art meeting I was thinking about I hope my kids are being good for this for this lady you know what I mean I hope my kids are being a uh, star students you know like please don't give her a hard time and I knew they wouldn't because they don't give me a hard time but you never know when someone new is going to walk into the classroom how they're going to react um but it all went well. Um, it's just a lot. Goodness, it's a lot. <clears throat> and then there's the emotional roller coaster. I have students who have come up to me sharing very personal information about like bullying and stuff. And I'm like, oh, sweetheart. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. I was bullied growing up too. I get it. And I'm a fighter where when they would bully me, I would fight back. And I know she is too. And I just don't want this kid to get in trouble. Don't, don't hit them. Don't hit them. No matter how mean they get to you, you can't, you can't because you're going to be the one who gets in trouble, you know? So an emotional roller coaster of feeling empathy and wanting to cry for this student because you know how they feel. I'm a grown adult. I still get bullied by these teenagers. I got a group of kids in one of my classes who like to snicker and giggle at me every time I turn around making fun of my glasses, making fun of my clothes, making fun of my hair. I've had other students come up to me and tell me that. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. They're just mean, mean kids. They're just mean kids. Like, I, you know? Um, and then there's the ones who don't want to listen. The ones who are constantly combating you. 
and I'm like, bro, like, why can't you just behave? Just sit down and be chill. Can't we just be chill, you know? I have a class I have to manage. That's one of the hats I have to wear. Classroom management. When they walk in and they're always watching. The bosses, the admin, the directors, they're always watching you. They're looking in your classroom or they peek their head in the door. They want to see that your classroom is, is managed, you know? And when you got one or two students jumping up, acting goofy, getting the other kids riled up, acting goofy, you're no longer manage, managing that classroom, you know? So I'm constantly trying to like, hey, if you can be good today, I will reward you with XYZ. You know what I mean? Like I have a student, I told him on Thursday, you be good today, then on Monday, I will let you play one of your goofy rap songs on the big TV, which he got excited about. Okay, cool, so Monday, I know, this kid earned it and I'm trying to teach him you have to earn it you can't come into this classroom uh, entitled thinking like it's oh this is my playground and you're gonna run it no 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 this is my classroom this is my home that I live in for nine hours of my day and you will follow my rules and you will earn privileges that's how it works you know <sighs> Sorry, I just like dumped on you guys. Once you get to talking about it, it all just kind of starts coming out like word vomit, really. Um, but yeah, it's hard being a teacher. And so part of me was like, I could do this for years. Then school started and I was like, I can't do this at all. <laughs> I don't know if I'm coming back next year. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. And it's only the first month. We're going into week number four. It's only been one month. We have an entire school year. I got to get through. <laughs> Am I going to make it? I don't know. Because I'm tired. I have to make it. I have to make it because my pride is going to make me make it. You know? I, I signed that contract for one school year. And my pride as an employee will not let me fail i have to succeed and i have to make it to the very end of my contract date but i don't know if i'm coming back and that's the problem and maybe it's too early to tell and that keeps getting told well the more you do it the easier it gets and and then and then it'll be second nature and you'll be like those teachers you look up to the 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 ones who've been doing it for five seven, 10 years, 40 years, and they know what they're doing and they make it look so effortless, that'll be you one day. And I'm like, <clears throat> maybe, <laughs> maybe it will. Uh, I don't know. So I'm just feeling insecure, I think, and a little overwhelmed. Uh, so yeah, being a teacher is more than just teaching a class. There's so many little details that they don't tell you about in the interview and they, no one ever talks about them, you know, but the silver lining is, is I got, I do got a good support system. Like the other teachers are always giving me advice. They don't ever, they don't ever tell me to leave them alone. Like, Hey, go away. I'm busy. They sit, they listen to me. They give me advice and we are all working together as a team and that's what I appreciate because that's the support system I need, you know? A little bit of validation um, that what I'm doing is okay, you know, and I'm making good choices and um, I'm providing an enriching experience for these kids in my classroom. So that is, um, that's good. I, I, I do like that. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Um, I've been yakking for way too long. I hope you all enjoyed the drawing process of this video. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. And I will catch you on the next one. See ya.